All right, so I'm going to go switch to the, the Supreme Court uh, nomination. I know you've you've explained on numerous occasions that you haven't made up your mind and you're not really interested in, in, in you know, debating this in the public. But I think one of the interesting things to me is just what the process that, that you, from your point of view, do you go when you, any Supreme Court nominee, be it Republican or Democrat, what is the process involved? Do you, you know, do you review their documents? Do you meet with them? What are the things you do to see the, 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 whether this uh, the, this nominee is worthy of your vote or not your vote? Sure. Well, I, I appreciate you, appreciate you asking a, a process question because I really believe the Constitution is set up in such a way that the Senate has a shared responsibility with the president for judicial nominations. And that's particularly important for Supreme Court. Uh, I think my, my job is to do an independent review. One of the problems in America, I believe, we have now is that everybody goes to their corners and it's, this is a political fight. I see, I see the TV ads and the millions of dollars that are being spent uh, like a political campaign. We're supposed to have an independent judiciary. That's why they're there for life. It's part of our checks and balances. And I think we're in a really bad place when this has become political campaigns. So I'm trying to block those kind of issues out, all of the, the extraneous stuff, and do my due diligence. So we have been gathering information Brett Kavanaugh has a large body of work, both as a judge and as a member of the Bush administration. I need to look and see as much as I can on that. We've gotten his opinions, his speeches. We're looking at other records that we'll be getting from the White House. And frankly, I think we're, they, we may be rushing this a little bit too much because of the significant number of records, but that's, that's not my call. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time with my staff that is working with me, and we've got several people working on this to try to do a deep dive and to try to review everything he can so that then as I I can review that, first of all, as of right now, I plan on waiting to meet with him. I do hope to meet with him, but my view is that I should wait until after the hearing is, uh, he has his hearing. I don't want my meeting with him uh, or any judge to be a meet and greet uh, and a photo op. It needs to be a substantive meeting on questions that I've found that I want to ask him on a variety of issues so I'd like to do that because some of them may be covered in the hearing. I may need a follow-up after that. So ideally, I would meet with him afterwards, but we're waiting to see depending on when that hearing's going to be because I'd like to be able to have that hearing, meet with him, and then at that point, you know, try to, to do whatever I need to do to make my decision. Is, are you getting any pressure, pressure from your own party, uh, I, I, not, you know, outside, but just within the, the, the body of the Senate on, on how to handle this? Because yeah. we, you, we, you're not at all. Because you you hear these things and you hear these reports, and, and you wonder if there's if there's a, a you know some some sort of idea that the Democrats are going to be in lockstep and do one thing, and oppose Republicans on on, on all all fronts. Well, you know you, that's that's one way to look at it. But there's just as much pressure with all the Republicans being in lockstep. I mean, you know, the fact of the matter is, um, uh, b- both sides started telling people how they should vote before a nominee was even named. Uh, we've had that. I had it here in Alabama that public officials, a couple of them were saying something that I should vote for this nominee regardless of who it might be. Uh, so you, you certainly hear that on the Democratic side, but likewise on the Republican side, you hear people that are have uh, that made up their mind before a nominee was selected, and certainly within hours or minutes after Brett Kavanaugh was named, has already said, yes, this is somebody we got to support. So I, I don't view my role that way, and I I don't succumb to the pressure. I don't feel the pressure. I'm going to because everybody knows the one thing I think I've established in my caucus as well as Republicans up there is that I'm an independent voice up there, and I'm going to do the right thing. I'm not a rubber stamp for any president, regardless of party or any party, uh, regardless of where the nominee's coming from. We got about a minute, a little, a little less than a minute left. And real quick, are you, as a senator, are you a little surprised the way everything you do as a senator? is looked at in the prism of what it means to your 2020 re-election bid. Uh, that seems to be, you know, you read the political media in a lot of places, that seems to be where a lot of it come from. Are you, did you anticipate something like this happening? Yeah, unfortunately, I did, uh, because I've just seen how, how we are, you know, we're such a, we, there's such a partisan divide right now. It's a, it's, the country is so tribal, and that's really unfortunate. So I knew the media would be doing that. But you know what? If I listened to the media and I listened to the pundits, I would have never run for this office. So I, I just block all that stuff out. I was telling somebody a few mo- moments ago, I'm always asked the questions, particularly by media, how do you navigate? And I, I don't need to navigate. What I, the only thing I navigate right now is my conscience. 
and and I'm going to do the what I believe to be the right thing. And once I make those decisions, then I if if I can't justify it, whether somebody agrees with me or not, I'm going to be able to justify it, and I will do that at, after I make those decisions. And we're not doing a, a navigation. We're not trying to jockey political sides. Uh, people are always looking at it through that lens, and I think that that's very unfortunate. I wish more people would be looking at what uh, every senator and every congressional person does with regard to what's the right thing for their district, what's the right thing for the state, what's the right thing for the country.